morning. So, if you watched my last video, you would know that last night we drove out to this campsite in the middle of nowhere, Iceland, and it was covered by a thick layer of fog. We couldn't see anything. And if you didn't watch the last video, or maybe this is your first time watching this channel, my name is Ryan. I live in the back of my self-converted camper van back in the States. Currently, I am on vacation in Iceland, and I'm renting out this camper van with my brother, and last night was our first night here. But this morning when I woke up, the thick fog that had covered this entire area last night had completely lifted and we could see exactly where we were and I had no idea how close we were to the waterfall. It's like maybe a hundred meters over that ridge out to the viewpoint. But just for a little bit of perspective, if you watch my last video, you could maybe see like 20 yards. It was such thick fog, but now you can see miles and miles out into the distance. We're on the top of this ridge overlooking that valley. Snowcap peaks off in the distance over there. There's a bunch of people up here now and I'm making breakfast. Also, Justin's on the inside of the van doing some dishes and helping me clean up while I cook breakfast. And if you're wondering why I'm hunched down next to a rock, it's because it is super windy out here, so I'm using it kind of as a wind block so that I can get this fire nice and hot to cook these eggs up. All right. Breakfast is served. <sighs> Definitely not a bad spot to enjoy some breakfast. Also, I just Googled it, and this waterfall is definitely higher than 100 feet. It is, in fact, 400 feet. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but the water down there is crystal clear. So beautiful. So, I think we're gonna leave the bed kind of down like this for now at least, and then maybe make it up if we need it for dinner. Justin mostly cleaned up the van, so should be good for driving. So let's get out of here. All right, so we are leaving the waterfalls. You can actually see them from our spot. And we are heading two hours kind of southwest out of the highlands, down onto Ring Road or Route 1 out here in nice thing because we're going out to see a uh, old abandoned plane crash out on the beach before we head, I think, back up into the highlands to find another campsite for tonight. I haven't really decided yet where we're gonna camp, but that's a problem that we're gonna figure out later today. But to start out, good thing we got a four-wheel drive van because we got about a six-mile drive down a bumpy dirt road with a couple washed-out sections. This road is kind of off the uh, beaten path for where most people travel here in Iceland. And the roads are kind of rough and you actually do need a four-wheel drive to make it in here. So even though this is supposed to be one of the most beautiful waterfalls in the country, it's actually one of the least visited. So it was cool to be able to get out here and see it. But since we came all the way out here, that means we got kind of a long drive to get back. <laughs> Seems like we've run into a little Icelandic traffic jam. Hopefully uh, we're not stuck behind it for too long though. Woo! We made it past. It's nice to be, uh, getting our money's worth with this four-wheel drive too. Especially over these washed out sections. Nice. And we really missed out on some views last night. It is beautiful out here. And we have made it back to the paved world. So now we've got about a two hour drive down to the beach. the parking lot where you walk out and see the uh, plane wreck and it crashed in in 1973 uh, because their engines froze and it was a naval plane but nobody died but the wreckage is still out there so we're gonna go check it out Ooh. so after I hopped out I realized I was actually kind of hungry so Justin's eat some of the rotisserie chicken I'm warming up another one of these hot dogs and we're just gonna take them with us while we hike out there Ooh. 
So I think on the drive over here I saw more waterfalls in an hour than I've seen in the entirety of my previous 25 years. That was definitely one of the most scenic drives I've ever been on, but it's about a 30 minute, 45 minute hike down to the plane. So I'll check in with you guys once we get there. There she is, an abandoned wrecked plane <clears throat> on a random beach in Iceland. Also, before we walk down here, I walked back to the van and put a hat on because it's kind of cold. But like I said, this plane crashed in 1973. And the reason for the crash has kind of been debated for a while, but most people think it's because there was holes in the fuel tank. And as you guys know, if you watched yesterday's video, this island is covered in fog quite a lot. So the pilots were trying to crash over there in the ocean, which is just over that ridge line. But when they came out of the thick fog, apparently they were closer to shore than they thought and ended up crashing on the beach. But all five of them survived. And the plane itself is a military C-117, flown by the US Navy all the way back to World War II. Pretty much up until it crashed, so pretty cool. pretty windy out here but it looks crazy with the mountains in the background but I think it's time to head out of here because 45 people in orange jump shoots pulled up on ATVs so next up it's a grocery store to pick up some dinner for tonight and then we're going to Fajad Fajad drag Guldafur that canyon all right so while we were walking off the beach this shuttle pulled up and we just kind of got on and asked him if we could pay for a ride back. So now we're on this giant four-wheel drive school bus riding back for $14, saving us about a 45-minute walk. Ooh. Now that thing would be cool to live in. Build out one of those, drive anywhere. So I remember from last night that I wasn't able to get the grill, like the large grill to work because it needs a different type of propane canister than those small ones. And the RV place that we rented this van from was supposed to give us a bigger one so that we could use that because I paid extra for it, but we didn't get one and I'm just now realizing that. And tonight we were gonna make burgers on the grill, but now we can't unless they have one of those big tanks at the grocery store. Um, but even if they don't, I think I'm still gonna get burger stuff and just cook them in a pan and then get a refund for that grill. Dinner secured. One last pit stop is the canyon, and then we're going to find a campsite. Perfect fit. Justin also ran inside to uh, fill up our two water jugs because when he was doing dishes this morning, we used up a lot of our tank. So we're just gonna pour those in there and refill it a little bit before we head out to camp. Got about a 45 minute drive to the canyon. So I'll check in with you guys once we get there. Made it. So this is the canyon. This is kind of like the final viewing platform that you can walk to. You got the waterfall on that side. It's a little bit overexposed because of the sun. See if I can maybe block it out. There might be some minerals or sulfur in it because all the water here is painting the uh, rocks kind of this orange color. And also, the sun being this high in the sky at 7 p.m. is definitely a little bit disorienting. It feels like my body has no idea what time of day it is. My body clock is all out of whack though. But it's kind of nice because you don't have to wake up early because no matter what time you go out, there's always sunset and it's pretty much almost always golden hour. And it looks like you used to be able to walk out there or maybe just a ton of people have done it in the past when you're not allowed to, but it seems like they're pretty fed up with people trying to climb over. They just put some rusted barbed wire to block you off. But anyways, I think it's time to head back because I don't want to be cooking dinner again at 12 o'clock at night like I did last night. So it's time to hit the road. So this campsite that we're driving to right now is supposedly, I don't know how well you can see them, but of those mountains up in the distance, tucked up in the Icelandic wilderness, just under one of those glaciers that's coming off that mountain. And fun fact about Iceland, it's actually made up of 11% glaciers, which I thought was pretty cool. And we've made it. where we're gonna be camping the night in front of this glacier right here. So there's one glacier right here. There's another glacier kind of right over there if you can see it, see it better right through there. And then over this hill, there's a massive glacier. 
So I think maybe we'll uh, so I think maybe we'll hike up to the glacier tomorrow. Check it out before we leave. But this is gonna be it. Not bad for the night. Pretty good views all around. Not bad. We'll get a good view of the uh, sun never setting. It'll probably dip below those mountains, but should stay light all night again. Oh, nice. Since we're not parked on an incline, door stays open. So I think Justin's gonna cook the burgers for us tonight. And then uh, while he's doing that, I'm gonna answer one of the most commonly asked questions that I get a lot on my channel about my van that I have back in the States. And that is, why did I not build a convertible bed? And I'm about to show you right now why I didn't. And the first reason is because it takes up a ton of space. So if you have a convertible bed like this, you can't have a big garage area. So I wouldn't be able to have my e-bike or all of that other junk that I have back in the back. And that was kind of valuable for me because I wanted some storage that was kind of out of the van and just kind of out of sight. So with a convertible bed like this, you don't really get that. And then also if you're like me and you don't really like making your bed every day, and even that is a chore, imagine having to build it like a Lego house. So not only do you have to build your dinner table, but you have to build your bed every single night on top of like putting your sheets on and stuff. So it's just not the most fun. But yeah, essentially the big reason why I don't is because of how much of a pain it is to set it up and break it down. Oh, all right, so after I got the uh, table set up, I kind of organized the van, got the bed upstairs made, got everything kind of cleaned up, ready to go. She's looking nice and pretty. Justin's back here, slaving away on the stove, making some bacon, yes. cooking the bacon first, and we're gonna cook those burgers in the bacon grease. And I know it looks like it might be six o'clock, but it is indeed 9 p.m. And the sun is still pretty high in the sky. Also, I do want to say that uh, being out here and living in a van in Iceland, it's definitely not like it is back in the States. The uh, the kind of apps that you use to find spots to camp like this aren't as robust. So it's a lot more few and far between that you find camps like, like this. And I don't think, um, I didn't really do any research on it, but I don't think that there's any BLM land out here in Iceland. So I'm not 100% sure we're allowed to camp here overnight, but I didn't see any signs. So there's also another camper over there. And there's a ton of parking spots so we're not really taking up anyone's space. So I think we should be fine. All right, bacon's done, burger's going on. Chef Justin's killing it. And I'll actually keep a uh, keep a running clock on where the sun is and what time it is. So it is currently 9.15 p.m. And that's where the sun is at. These are pretty thin burgers, but they're cooking quick. It's nice to not have to actually cook and get the night off and just kind of uh, record Justin. And also I get a lot of comments about people saying like, why do people that I have in my vlogs not talk? And the reason is 90% of the time my brain's going 100 miles an hour and I'm always talking. And then the other 10% is just a lot of the people that I have in my vlogs aren't YouTube personalities. So if you think like a Jake Paul vlog or something like that, they have a bunch of people who are always on YouTube and kind of it's more comfortable. But when you come out here and someone just points a camera in your face, it's kind of hard to just start talking. So he's not mute. <laughs> he does talk. All right, burgers are done. Some bacon on there. And we're throwing the other burgers and we're just gonna let them cook down here while we eat. Because they do take kind of a while when the wind starts to kick up, the pan cools down, so it takes them a while to cook. Cheers. So it is currently 
11.42 p.m. and this is what it looks like out. So the sun technically set 30 minutes ago and this is how bright it is. It's only gonna get a little bit darker than this for the rest of the night. So we're definitely gonna have to draw these shades because it is actually still very bright out. But we've got both of the beds made tonight. Top bunk, bottom bunk. And then I actually plugged in, uh, so it was a little extra from the company, I got an inverter um, so that I could charge my laptop while I was out here. I got that plugged into the cigarette adapter, but my laptop is fully charged now, so go ahead and unplug that. And then I think it's pretty much time for bed because it's almost midnight. And since it was laid out so late, we actually did decide to uh, hike up to the glacier earlier, right up through there, because we were kind of just bored trying to kill time. I showed some uh, shots of that in the time lapse. But anyways, I think it's time to say goodnight to the midnight sun, which is what they call this time of year because it is currently after midnight and it is still this bright out. I am extremely tired and looks like Justin is too, so I think we're gonna get all these shades drawn and uh, go to bed. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help. And I will catch you guys tomorrow morning in my next video. Oh,